following message was recorded at The Way. For additional messages and information, log on to our website, www.thewaycolumbus.com, or email us at thewaycolumbus at gmail.com. Now, get ready to hear a word from God. Romans. Chapter 4, Romans chapter 4. Y'all got me up here jumping around on my bad leg. (laughs) Hallelujah. Romans chapter 4, go to verse 17. Bless your name, Jesus. Mm. We give you glory tonight. We give you praise. If you don't have a Bible, share with someone close to you. I like you to look at the word. Look at the word. Look at the word. Look at the word. Hallelujah. Do you have Romans 4 and 17? If you have it, indicate by saying, I have it. I'm going to read out of the uh, uh, HCSB. So follow along in whatever translation that you have. Amen. And I will uh, call out verses so that you know exactly where I am. In God's sight, as it is written... I have made you the father of many nations. Uh, this, this passage is talking about Abraham, the father of faith, Abraham. He believed in God who gave life to the dead and calls things into existence that do not exist. He believed in God who gives life to the dead and calls things into existence that do not exist. See, God calls things into existence that do not exist. Verse 18, against hope, with hope he believed. So that he became the father of many nations, according to what he had been, according to what had been spoken. If you're underlining in your Bible, you can underline that passage. Somebody say he had a word. He had a word. He had a word. So will your descendants be. This is the word. He considered his own body to be already dead since he was about a hundred years old. And the deadness of Sarah's womb without weakening in the faith. In other words, faith does not ignore the situation. Faith does not ignore the situation. He did not waver in unbelief at God's promise, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God. He was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God because, 21, he was fully convinced that what he had promised, God had promised, God was able to. To perform. So far, the reading of the scripture. I want to speak in your hearing for a few moments the faith factor. Everybody say the faith factor. The faith factor. factor. We've been talking the last couple of uh, messages uh, about uh, Pastor Kendall came with a word that said, Don't buckle in the middle of your test. Don't buckle in the middle, in the middle of your test. And then I brought a message that said there's a war over your word. And we begin to talk about prophetic words and to begin to bring some insight and some uh, balance and some understanding as it relates to the prophetic uh, utterances of God within the body of Christ. And then last week we talked about prophetic delays. And we talked about uh, the process Uh, that period of time between the speaking of the prophetic word and the fulfillment of the prophetic word. We talked about how prophetic words speak 
to the future. They are predictive in nature. They talk about things that have not happened. Uh, we talked about how God uh, is eternal. He lives outside of time. He has a panoramic view of time. Uh, but when he speaks, he speaks from eternity into time. Uh, but we, being bound by time, are consumed with the winds of God. But the winds of God are not as important as who God is. The winds of God are not as important as who God is. For when God speaks, God is speaking from a vantage point of something that's already done. From his vantage point, it's not yet to happen. It's already happened. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying? Because he's eternal. He's outside of time, and he's looking at time like a timeline, a panoramic view of time. However, we are in time. So when God speaks a word, we think it's going to happen right now. I was talking to Armand earlier, and we were kind of talking about this. How many of you have ever made your child or your niece or your nephew a promise you were going to do something? You just said, I'm going to take you to the zoo. You don't tell them when. You don't give them any details. You don't tell them what zoo. Right? You just say, you know what, I'm going to take you to the zoo. In your mind, you know you're going to take them to the zoo. You know when you're going to take them to the zoo. But the child doesn't know when. A child is oftentimes impatient. When are you going to take me to the zoo? When are we going to the zoo? Are we going to the zoo today? Are we going to the zoo tomorrow? And they just pull on you and pull on you and pull on you. Because they haven't reached a place of maturity to understand who's promising. They don't have the patience and they don't have the track record of seeing you fulfill your promise to know that it doesn't matter when. If mommy said we're going to the zoo, she's going to make it good. Many of us are in this situation as it relates to our prophetic cycle. We are, every single person, I, I can say it with all certainty, every single person in this room is between a prophetic word and a manifestation. Everybody. God has said something in everybody's life, heart, spirit that has not happened. Y'all with me? But many of us have not matured to the place that we understand the character of God. For it is the character of God that enables you to have faith in him. Anybody, think about it, anybody in your life you've ever trusted, you trusted them because they prove themselves to be trustworthy. And you know their track record. For many of us, we haven't walked with God long enough to have a track record. Or we don't consider the things that he's done as proof of his faithfulness. Sometimes our ideas and are too lofty as to what we can consider a provable fact in our lives. However, for those of us who don't have our own experience, we have other people's experience. That's the word of God. That's what the Bible is for. The Bible is designed to give you insight into who God is and how God operates and how God moves, or at least how he has moved. Y'all with me? 
I've already hollered, so I ain't hollering no more tonight. So, in our process of waiting, everybody say waiting. waiting. We're all waiting for something, something that has not happened. We're waiting. We're waiting. We talked about how God is developing our character and how he's setting the stage, the place of destiny is being prepared for when you're ready to get there, right? So character development is happening, but there's another key piece that must be understood as it relates to that in-between period. And that is the piece that we call faith. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 that without faith it is impossible to please God. It's impossible. For he that cometh to God must first believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. What that says to me is that even for us to be saved initially, faith has to be born in us. <clears throat> for he that cometh to God must already believe. Ah. That means that whether you know it or not, the seed of faith, if you're sitting in this room and you've given your life to Christ, the seed of faith has already been planted in you. For you couldn't come to God except you first believed that he is, that he's a rewarder, that he will respond to them that seek after him, right? All right? So faith is an integral piece. It is an integral piece not only in the prophetic process, the manifestation of the prophetic word. It is an integral piece in our walk with God. You cannot successfully live for God if faith is not produced, if faith is not matured, if faith is not increased, if faith is not developed in you. How many of you know that a seed is powerful? Why? Because the seed has the potential of whatever is in it. So by itself, just, just a seed by itself, having not done anything, having not been planted, having not been watered, is powerful. That's why if you have just the mustard seed of faith, you can do something with that. But we cannot remain at mustard seed faith. That faith must be dropped into the ground. The ground of what? The ground of your heart. The ground of your mind. And it must be watered and cultivated. How is faith cultivated? Somebody tell me. The word of God. Faith is cultivated by the word of God. There's no other way to produce faith in a person. For the faith that we received prior to salvation came because of a word. The Bible says, faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. But how can he hear without a preacher? How can he preach except he be sent? So, so faith has to come as a result of a word. That word, though, is simply a seed that has to be watered with more word. Y'all follow me? Okay, this is the faith factor. So faith has to grow for us to be able to function within the kingdom because everything in the kingdom of God operates by faith. Everything, all of this stuff, requires faith because very little of it makes sense. Hello? Let's be honest. 
We get up here and we teach and we try to explain, but very little of this makes sense to the natural mind. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's why the Bible says the carnal mind cannot receive the things of God, the things of the Spirit. They have to be spiritually discerned. So that means the Word of God don't make sense. As a matter of fact, the Bible calls preaching foolishness. Think about it. It's kind of stupid to stand up here and have to holler at people every week. Like, really, there, God, there's no better way? There's no better way than every week to try to convince people of the word of God? It's foolishness. So that must mean that there's a disconnect with the natural mind and the word of God. So the spirit of God must breathe on the word of God for the word of God to become real in you. You need more than a concordance. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying? You need more than a commentary to grasp the word. Those things will cause the word to attach to your head, but not your heart. And that's why you can quote the scripture, but as soon as trouble hits your life, it falls off like you don't know it. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. As soon as things don't go your way, all of them verses turn to blur. You don't see any of it. You don't stand on any of it. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Because faith has to be produced in your heart by the Holy Spirit. The same Spirit that took the word you heard of salvation and drew you. For no man can come, no matter what message he's heard, except the Spirit draw him. So the same spirit that is at work at salvation is at work in producing faith in us. What does that say? We have to invite the Holy Spirit into our faith development process. We have to pray and we have to ask the Holy Spirit to make the word real to us. My God. How many of you have been reading the Bible or meditating on the scripture and you had what you considered to be an aha moment. Like all of a sudden, what was words and commas and periods and thou's and these and thus's blows open in your mind. That's the Holy Ghost. The word cannot be grasped in the heart until revelation comes. That's why revelation is so important. Because revelation is part of the process of faith being produced. My God. Good. Good now what we have to understand is that without faith, we inhibit our own prophetic destiny. God gives the word, which is his mind, his will, his plan, his intentions. But there has to be a response to the word. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. I'm teaching better than y'all looking. <laughs> God never gives a word without requiring a response. James put it this way. Faith, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, not to just be a hearer of the word, but to be a doer of the word. Because faith without works is dead. So a word from God always requires a response 
of faith. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. In other words, God doesn't just do it because he said. He does it because we believe what he said. Oh, God, help me tonight. I'm going to wrap this up. We believe what he said. That's what causes God to move. Oh, God. Is it possible? Let me just ask you a question, a couple questions. Is it possible that the delay is a faith delay? <laughs> yeah. I just want to ask you, is it possible? See, you want God to prove it, then you'll believe. But the very fact that God spoke it proves it. Oh, did you catch that? God stands outside of time. God stands outside of time. God only speaks the finished thing. <laughs> so the fact that he said it is the proof. It is. <laughs> this is why you can believe the word and not see anything. Because it's the one who is speaking the word that's the issue. Ah, God. So God says, because he's God, and his mouth creates. You're saying God proved it. And God said I did prove it. I said it. Good God Almighty. What I say is the proof. Faith. Now faith is. The substance. My God. Of things hoped for, and the I said I wasn't screaming no more tonight. <laughs> and the evidence of things not seen. Mm. My God Almighty, y'all gonna make me get Fred Price up here and walk around with my Bible open. <laughs> Man. So, again, is it possible that it's a faith holdup? Hmm. All of this is part of the process. Because God moves according to Jesus. Jesus healed many a people. But some people he healed, and he said, be it unto you, according to your faith. Be it unto you, according to what you're able to believe. See, the centurion understood. Some of y'all read your Bible. Oh, yes, yes. Shall I finish? The centurion understood who Jesus was. So because he understood who Jesus was, he said, you don't even have to go to my house. My God. My God. Come on. Come on. Just speak the word. My God. And my servant will be healed. Jesus backed up and said, I've not seen this kind of faith anywhere in Jerusalem. Oh, my God. I'm not seeing this face. He wasn't even saved. But he grasped the concept of knowing who's speaking. This is a faith principle. 
simple. Come on. Oh my God. Oh my God. Faith is about who God is. And once you know who he is, it's impossible not to believe what he does. Mm. So, this is why anything that is not a faith, according to Romans 14 and 23, is sin. That's how serious of a principle faith is in the kingdom. And not only is lack of faith sin to a believer, it produces the fruit of sin. Because a lack of faith always births disobedience. Come on now. The reason why many of us struggle with sin because it's really a faith issue. Because if you believed God, you would obey him. You would obey him. Because you know him. And you know his character, and you know he's good for his word. <sighs> so that's why lack of faith is sin and produces the fruit of sin in our lives. Disobedience. None of us watches the, meteorolo the, the meteorologist on the way to work and hear them say 100% chance of rain and you go out the house without an umbrella. Why? Because you believe. When you have faith, faith requires your actions to line up with what you believe. So, if you say you believe, Yet your life is a contradiction to what you say you believe. James says you don't believe. He said, if you show me your works, I'll show you my faith. Because my faith produces works. It's not the other way around. Faith brings alignment to the work, to the action. So is it possible that the delay, the prophetic delay, is a faith delay? I'm just asking. I'm not telling you it is because everybody's situation is different. <coughs> Some of us are character delays. Some of us are mature, maturity delays. But is it a faith delay for you? Do you really believe God? Now, I'm done here. Let's just touch Romans 4. It's talking about Abraham, the father of faith. Why is he the father of faith? He's the father of faith because uh, what would be known as the nation of Israel came out of his covenant, his faith in God, and his covenant with God, and the promise God made to him to make him the father of many nations. Now, this, this passage I read is just like full. So I'm going to graze it so y'all can go home. All right? As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. He believed in God who gives life to the dead and calls things into existence that do not exist. He believed in God. He was given an outlandish word. Some of us can't believe for a job. 
when God says, I'm going to give you a job or I'm going to give you a promotion, or, I'm going to give you a business. We can't believe for the little things. Imagine if God said, I'm going to make you a nation. You. I'm going to make you a nation. Imagine the shock and the awe of getting that type of word. Right? How many of you think you could believe something like that? Nobody. But this, this man, Abraham, was given that kind of promise. Now, what we have to understand is that Abraham apparently didn't just meet this God. He apparently, now you come on, you got to read in between the lines when you read stuff. He apparently already knew something about this God and had some kind of history with this God. And apparently, he found some kind of favor with this God because of his faith. I believe it was Abraham's faith that enabled him to even get this particular. You got to understand that God is so into faith. That he's looking for someone who just will outlandishly believe so he can tell them something outlandish. (laughs) Yes, God. Yes, God. Imagine the words that haven't been released in your life. Because you don't even have the capacity to hear it, let alone believe it. God, I feel God in here. Y'all ask for revelation, I'm getting it. Imagine what you haven't heard. What hasn't been released to you. Imagine what God has in his mind that he's searching the earth for faith. Uh, I don't know about you, but I want the kind of faith that will release somebody else's promise to me because they couldn't believe it. He believed in God who gives life to the dead. Oh, my God. Apparently, he had seen something already and caused things into existence that do not exist. I'm talking about your God. He specializes in giving life. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. And he specializes in creating where there's nothing. If we could only get that kind of faith, we would never be discouraged because there's not a job, because there's not a house, because there's not a car. When I serve the God who specializes in creating what doesn't exist, that calls those things that be not as though they were. My God. This is our God. Do you know who you serve? He, he, and this is why God doesn't, God doesn't go out of his way to prove himself. Because his track record is established. Who are you to ask the eternal God to prove himself to you? And you'll believe. <laughs> He says, check out my resume. My God. My God. Mm, 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 mm. Against hope, with hope he believed. Mm. It, excuse me. It is so important to hope. It is so important to have expectation. I know delayed expectation is painful, but expectation.
expectation is it is the breeding ground for the manifestation of the things of God. We must be people who always hope. Oh, my God. This is why the enemy fights us so, so viciously and so violently because he wants to rob you of hope. Because if he can rob you of hope, he can steal your faith. He wants you to give up. He wants you to not even want it anymore. Don't even want it. Don't even, don't even turn your mind and your heart to even think that there's a possibility that your life could change. Oh, just give it up. Just give it up. You know how you see how long it's been. Just give it up. You see what you've been through. Just give it up. You see you don't have no support. Why do you keep even having an inkling of hope? That anything's going to change and get better in your life. He wants to rob you of your hope because hope is the foundation of faith. Mm. Yeah. But Father Abraham taught us something. He, he hoped against hope, with hope, he believed so that he became the father of many nations according to what God had spoken. So will your descendants be. He considered his own body to be already dead. <clears throat> he did not ignore the facts. The fact was Abraham was old. Now, we got nurses in here. We got wannabe nurses. He ignored he uh, recognized the fact, rather, that his body was dead, that he was old. We all know medically, a certain age, you're not having no more children as a man. If you do, they're going to have probably big foreheads and three eyes. <laughs> okay? I'm serious. The older you get, the higher chance of you having a child that has some type of this developmental, help me nurses, am I right? The older you get, the chances go up of having a child that has some type of delay, right? That's what they teach us. This man was 100. You know, some would say he didn't have nothing left but dust. <laughs> he wasn't tripping. He wasn't trying to, I am not old. My sperm count is what it was when I was 35. Come on now. <laughs> he wasn't ignoring the faith, doesn't ignore the facts. Faith didn't say he's young. Faith said, I'm old, but God, who gives life to the dead. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. And who calls those things into existence that don't exist. My God. And the deadness of Sarah's womb. Without weakening in the faith. He did not waver in unbelief at God's promise. James puts it so clearly and said, a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. A Christian who has a faith problem is unstable in every area of their life. Every, honey, not just church stuff. Y'all know how we like to make church stuff and then everything else in the world? No. As a believer, it's all in the bucket. 
we have a faith issue, you have instability in several areas of your life guaranteed. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. How can he think he will receive anything from God? Because God responds to faith. Faith is not based upon what I see. Faith is not based upon how big my check is. Faith is not based upon how many notices I've gotten in the mail. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Faith is not based upon how many bill collectors are calling me right now. Faith is based upon the word of God. Now, ultimately, faith will cause you to straighten out those areas in your life. Because faith always requires an adjustment of us. God comes to speak to every area out of order in our lives and bring adjustment. Faith responds with adjusting. He didn't waver in unbelief at God's promise. But he was strengthened in his faith. These kind of messages, the move of God and the presence of God that we experience today is all designed at one thing, to strengthen your faith. Words of confirmation are sent to what? Strengthen your faith. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. If you will hold on to what God has said and choose not to waver no matter what happens or what doesn't happen or how long because you know your God, he will always send help. He will always send you strength to your faith. Simon, Simon, Satan has desired to have you, that he might sift you as wheat. But I prayed and rebuked the devil. No. But I prayed that it wouldn't happen. No. But I prayed that your faith fail you not. (laughs) And when you are converted, Strengthen your brother's faith. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. My God. It says, but he was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God. Praise is such an important part of faith, of sustaining. Praise keeps you in remembrance. Praise and worship keeps you in remembrance of who God is. It keeps the acts, the deeds, and the character of God before you. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. It's so important to praise God. Because praise robs your struggle of its strength. And it strengthens your perception of God. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Praise doesn't make God bigger than he is. God, praise makes him bigger to you. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. When you praise God, you enlarge him in your circumstance. He don't get no bigger in heaven because God can't get bigger. But your perception of God can enlarge. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. 
This man was strengthened in his faith and he gave glory to God because he was fully convinced that what he had promised, he being God, he was also able to perform the faith factor. Stand on your feet. Thank you for listening. We hope this message has enriched your life. For more information, log on to our website, www.thewaycolumbus.com, or email us at thewaycolumbus at gmail.com. And remember, Jesus is the way. Thank you.